All right, so number three, like I just said, number three, this 108, this is the bearing, so this is your beta, this is the 108. All right, and then we're going to do, what I say, five. Okay, so forces of 16 pounds and 22 pounds make an angle of 42 degrees with each other and are applied to a bookcase at the same point. So these forces come in at 16 pounds and 22 pounds. Well, this one's a little bit longer. 22 pounds, 16 pounds, and this is your 42 degrees. Okay, they make an angle of 42 degrees together. The tails are together. This is not a head tail thing like we had done, right? And so what we want, uh, it says determine the magnitude of the resultant force to the nearest pound. So this happens at the same point. This is your resultant vector. All the tails are together. This is where the parallelogram version of this comes into play. So this when I finish this off, this is parallel to this, so this is 22. And this is parallel to this, so this is 16, right? So how could I find the magnitude of the resultant to the nearest pound? So magnitude means I'm looking for what? The what? not the direction, the length, right? So I'm looking for the magnitude of my purple vector, right? Do we have enough skill and knowledge to be able to figure that out? What could I do? Any ideas here? I can make a triangle. Do we kind of already have a triangle there made? Yeah? I have this triangle here, right? And of this triangle, I don't, this angle isn't in the triangle. Can I figure this angle right here out? Yes. How do I figure that angle out? If this is the parallelogram method. We talked about parallelograms a week or so ago. What has to be true about these two angles if this is a parallelogram? Supplementary, right? These have to add, because this is parallel lines. These are your same side interior angles. So this right here is 180 minus 42. So this angle right here is 138. So now I have this triangle, right? And if I just separate and redraw this, this is 16, this is 22, this is 138, this is R. How can I find that? Cosines, law of cosines, right? This is a side angle side situation, so can't I just use the law of cosine? Bless you. Does that make sense to you? That's how I did every single one of those on that other paper, which made it way harder because when you had the bearing angles and stuff, you had to go figure them out weirdly, but it worked. So that works here. This is easier than doing some of the other stuff. So it's just the law of cosines. So R squared is equal to 16 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 16 times 22 times cosine of 138. See, on this one, we can't work it like we did yesterday because I don't have the, I don't actually have the ordered pair, the component form for these two to add them together to get the component form of this one. So this is kind of my only option. Now, at this point, can the calculator help me with everything else? Yes, it can. I need to make sure I'm in degree mode, which I am. So I'm just going to do it all in one step. Square root 16 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 16 times 22, thank you, <laughs> times the cosine of 138. And that's all. And I get 35.541. 35.541. But it says, determine the magnitude of the resultant force to the nearest pound. So what's my actual answer? 36. Okay, so usually... You know, three decimal places, three decimal places, unless you're told otherwise. And sometimes you're told otherwise, even on the AP exam, so you need to make sure that you're ready for that. Now, is that a reasonable answer? 
And how do I know that that's a reasonable answer? It's the biggest angle. Very good. Because I'm sorry. Well, because you're adding the forces, yes. And because this is the biggest angle, so it has to be across from the biggest side. I mean, there's still a chance I could be wrong, but at least it's not like 500 or it's not 21 or something weird like that that you could catch your mistakes on. Are we good with that? Any questions? Okay. So draw them out. Think about what you would need to do and how. Now, the other one I want to look at is number nine. So it says a force of 600 pounds is required to pull a boat and trailer up a ramp inclined at 15 degrees from the horizontal. Find the combined weight of the boat and the trailer. Does this sound like a physics question you've heard before? Yes, right? Okay, so even if it's not, this is the only one like it, and I'm going to help you draw the picture. So if you haven't done it yet, or it was last year, and you don't remember, or whatever, I just didn't want to just omit it. I figured we could at least talk you through it, and then hopefully make it make sense. All right, so here is the horizontal. And here is my ramp of 15 degrees, right? And then here is the trailer, whatever, okay? So here's what we know. We, and then I, when I went and talked to Ms. Melton yesterday, we got, I got some other uh, terminology there just to make sure that I was saying that. She would say something, I was like, what do you mean by that? And, oh, okay, that's the same thing we do, but we call it whatever. So there's a, we want the combined weight, right? And so this trailer and the truck, well, I'm not going to draw the whole picture or anything, but this thing has a weight that's based on gravity, right? That would come down here and gravity pulls it down perpendicular to the ground. Yes? Then there's also a force that the trailer and the truck put against the ramp itself, right? And that force is perpendicular to the ramp, right? Then there's this force of it that you have to use to pull it up. So it's like pull, it's actually being pulled back down this way too, right? There's a force coming this way as well. These things right here are parallel. See how those are parallel? And although there's a right angle here, there's also a right angle here to make this triangle to make them parallel. You could even draw the triangle in this way. So do you see the triangle you get there? This should be all familiar to you physics-wise. I'm not sure, we'll talk, you got a left triangle and a right triangle. Which one are, do you usually use? The, the right one, okay. That's the one that made more sense to me too, but I, it was, I had seen it drawn both ways and so I wasn't sure. That's one of the reasons why I went to her. Um, all right, so what is this angle right here? This angle right here is the ramp angle. This is 15, right? And you have a right triangle. We are looking for the combined weight of the boat and the trailer. The combined weight is your mg, right? Your mass times gravity. Okay, she kept saying mg this and mg that. I was like, mg, what? Is that like magnesium? I knew it wasn't. But <laughs> I was like, I don't know, what is your mg? She was like, mass times gravity. That makes sense. Okay, that, I mean, I don't call it mg. We call it something else. But, um, so that's what this is. This is your mg, or in this case, I mean, it's the weight either way. So that's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. We're going to call it w for weight. doesn't matter. And it says it's a force of 600 pounds required to pull the boat trailer up the ramp. So I drew my vector this way, but really I'm trying to pull it back the other way, right? So this is 600, which means this is 600 right here. So with all of that information, do I have enough information just to find the combined weight of the trailer and the boat? Mm -hmm. You could have done this years ago. This is basic right triangle trig, right? You have this angle, you have this side length, and you need this. Which trig ratio is that? Sine, because this is your opposite, this is your hypotenuse. So the sine of 15 is equal to the opposite, which is 600, over W, which means W is equal to 600 over the sine of 15. So the combined weight of the boat and the trailer is 600 divided by the sine of 15. Yeah. And you get 2318.222 pounds. 
Okay, so when she was drawing this, so I said, I, what basically I gave her a blank, but I said, can you just show me how you would show your kids to draw this? Because I want to make sure that I'm not doing something weird. And so she's drawing it. She was like, well, that's when she was going, well, this is just your MG cosine theta, and this is just your MG sine theta. And I was like, okay. Um, and I guess that's one of the ways that y'all just are told what's what. And what we came up with the other day is actually how you find those things. And I want to make sure you make that connection, because I think there's a whole lot of connections that aren't being made through your math and science, and you think they're new, totally separate things, and they're not. What this is, okay, let me see if I can find a different color. Um, so this right here, is this your mg sine theta or your mg cosine theta? Cosine. This is your mg cosine theta that you're used to doing, right? And then this or this is your mg sine theta, right? Well, all that is is this, r cosine r cosine theta, r sine theta. Y'all don't write them in an ordered pair vector like that. You don't write them in component form, but that's what it is. And one of the things she said to me was they, they can do this stuff. One of the things they have a hard time with, like if I give them a, a, a coordinate plane, they get x, they get y, like y'all can graph, good job, right? <laughs> Ooh, we can graph things. But when you turn it, then which one's x and which one's y, and there's not like an actual coordinate plane, it gets all weird. Well, that's all that's happening here, right? It's just, it's turned, but that's still what this is. It's still your x and your y components there to what you have, okay? And that mg is just your r, which all that is is the magnitude of whatever you got going on, and that's what your weight is. Does that make sense to you? And I really do, I mean, I'm a true believer that the more that the connections you can make, the more it makes sense to you, the more you'll be able to remember it and apply it and understand this isn't some new weird stuff. And um, not that it's going to benefit y'all any, but um, moving forward, I'm going to make sure that I can kind of do that as we go to make those connections because we can't always change the order of what's happening. But um, if we could make the connections a little bit better, I think that'd be better off for you. So it's not new and different. I mean, it's a little bit of a different look at things and it's more of a pure math, but it's still the same thing you're doing in physics, okay? We good? And if all you were ever done was just told, oh, well, this is mg cosine theta, and this is mg sine theta, and you're like, I don't know which is which, and I get them mixed up, look, if you draw that triangle and you got that angle, guess what? This is mg cosine theta, and this is mg sine theta, because your mg is your weight, right? So all this is is the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. It's when you're solving for it. This value is this times the sine of theta, and that's what you're getting. It's canceling that stuff out, okay? We good? Does that help a little bit? Any little bit of connection maybe? All right. Then um, some of these are just like yesterday's. I think the rest of them you can do just fine. Um, pay attention to what's happening in number seven and um, the fact that it's 10 miles per hour and it's asking you for three minutes. So there's a little bit of conversion there, but very minor. At first, I thought this was the hardest problem ever. I mean, I have, I worked that problem so many different times, and I could not get the answer. Then I finally figured, after like the tenth time I did it, I had one of my vectors going in the wrong direction, and there's no wonder none of that made any sense to me. So you have to know east and west. <laughs> Apparently, I know them. I've just totally messed that up. Do you have any questions over any of this at all? Okay. All you have to know, I did it for you, so it doesn't matter. Okay, it's the only one you're going to have like it. It's a physics question. You're not in AP physics, and it may not make sense to you. 